Welcome to Project Me, the podcast. I'm your host, Tiffany Carter, the founder of Project Me, multimillionaire entrepreneur, former TV newscaster, money-making expert, female empowerment speaker, and self-proclaimed office supply addict. My mission is to take the mystery out of making big money. Every week on Project Me, the podcast, I'll share success tips, strategies, and stories from other entrepreneurs, experts, and millionaires, showing you exactly how you can achieve your most exceptional life. Now let's get to it. Exciting announcement for all of my listeners. I've officially opened my exclusive group, the Project Me Passive Income Posse, to the public. This group is by application only, so we can keep the group high vibe and spend our time, energy, and expertise only helping those of you who truly want massive success and impact. You get live weekly trainings from me, special guest coaches, and direct access to me and my business partner for all of your questions. To learn more and apply, go to projectmewithtiffany.com, click on work with me and select Project Me Posse. And of course, any questions, feel free to DM me at Project Me with Tiffany. Welcome to the Posse and Podcast Project Me with Tiffany Carter. I'm your host, Tiffany. What's up, guys? I have gotten so many requests to do an episode on this. So you guys ask and I deliver. So if you ever want me to cover a certain topic in an episode or even have a certain guest on that you would love to hear, you know, how I interview them in my, you know, Tiff style, just drop me a DM on Instagram at Project Me with Tiffany. That's the best way. If you don't use Instagram for some reason, number one, you need to get with the program. Number two, <laughs> you can also hit me up in Facebook Messenger at Project Me with Tiffany as well and just let me know. So today's episode is pricing your services and products as an entrepreneur to increase your sales and get more people to say yes. Oh my Lord, that is the hardest thing for most people is to know how to price something or what happens is many people price things and they're pricing it so low because they're afraid if they price it higher, no one will buy it. And since so many of you guys who are listeners and who follow me, you're such giving people, as I always say, like attracts like. You want to make sure more people can afford it because you want to help more people. It's a lot of times it is coming from a good place, but if we really peel back the layers, it's also coming from um, a, a lack of self worth. Not to say you have to be at a level of lack of self worth, you know, where I was five years ago, for example, um, which I had none. It could be coming from a place of uncertainty, like, well, there's so many other people who are coaches, or there's so many other people who are teaching this thing, and I don't have the credentials as, you know, as they have. I don't have the degree. I'm not as old as them. I'm not as knowledgeable. Maybe I'm not as fit as they are, or my yoga practice isn't where I want it to be, or whatever it is. And then we start devaluing our intellectual property, as I call it. So we start devaluing it, devaluing it. And maybe you have an actual physical item, you have, you know, shirts, jewelry, hats, cups, uh, journals, books, whatever it is, you might have that. But that's still a form of your um, intellectual or creative property. And you are diminishing its value um, in order to maybe think you're going to get more people to buy it because it's less expensive. And guess what? What happens is, is when we price something so low, number one, we end up not feeling good because it takes so many more humans to buy the thing for us to make any money. And then it almost feels like resentful. It's like, then then it can start down a really bad, you know, really bad path with money mindset. Like, I release this book, I release these exercise trainings, I release these cooking, you know, videos or recipes or whatever it is. And I'm not making any money. Only so many people bought it. And I put all this energy and time and effort and emotion into it. And maybe I shouldn't be doing this. And it really is a bad setup 
for your money mindset to really go off the rails and for your inner bully to come out and just like beat you over the head with a bat for days and days and days and days. Raise your hand if this sounds familiar. (laughs) We've all been there. Anyone who pretends that they've not been there, don't trust them. Everyone has been there, whether you are in a, you know, a corporate job or you have your own company, or you're in a corporate job with a side hustle, whatever it is, we've all been there, we've all felt that way. And a lot of times I see this happening with people who are employees with their time, right? I see it with entrepreneurs too, but your time is of high value. In fact, your time is of the utmost value. And a lot of times we will, you know, stay late at work or someone asks, can you just do this one more thing? Or, you know, coworkers ask you, can you help me with this? And pretty soon you've just been robbed of your time and then in creeps in, you know, uncle resentment, right? And now you're like, oh, that coworker is so annoying or my cousin is so needy and I don't even want to pick up the phone. So if you're in that mode anywhere in your life, you have an exchange that is off. And I'm sure you've heard said before, all money is, is energy. And if you've never heard it explained this way, I want to explain it for you. Because when I first heard that, I was like, what the hell are these, you know, people talking about money is energy, you know, money is paper, like money is cash, like money makes the world go round. Like I like money, you know, I, I didn't quite get it. And I, I really do get it now. So here's the thing. It's an exchange. So for someone to do private coaching with me, obviously, I charge a premium because you're getting private exclusive coaching with me. It's not just about my time, but my time's a factor and the results I get people and my intellectual property, right? Meaning all of my wealth of knowledge and proven track record that is of high value. So as being an entrepreneur 11 years as a self-made multimillionaire, I charge one amount. But let's say this was my first or second year in business. Yes, what I would charge would be a lot less because that that energy exchange would need to be fair, reasonable and even. Does that make sense to you guys? Um, If you want anything clarified, of course, hit me up on Instagram at Project Me with Tiffany, DM me. I'm more than happy to help clarify anything for you. I don't want you like driving around all day scratching your head like what is she talking about? So we have to just be honest with ourselves. So this is what I tell clients. This is what I tell people in my Project Me Passive Income Posse. I say in terms of pricing, whatever your thing is, let's say it's services. Okay, let's go with that first. When you're pricing that, how much money would you need to make from a coaching session or from, you know, someone buying a online program or a membership from you or a retreat from you, how much would you need to make per human being? So per headcount, and I mean net, not gross. Okay. I mean, after expenses and taxes, how much would you need to make if you're having a really crappy day or week, you just feel like crap, the shits hit the fan, some stuff's going on in your personal life, you're just not feeling it, but you still have to show up for your clients and your business, how much would you have to be paid where you wouldn't be resentful or dreading it or irritated over it? That's the best way. Because when you're in a great energy and a great space, which I see a lot of new entrepreneurs in, because it's like a high when you start. I had it too. Uh, That high for me lasted... A solid 18 months, I would say, you know, that high of adrenaline, like I'm doing this, I can't believe I'm doing this, this is amazing. And I gave myself, you know, a lot of time knowing it takes, you know, time to really build something. And I, wow, I really was on a high until that starts wearing off. It's kind of like that new relationship feeling. I call it the freshy feeling in a new relationship where like the tingles wear off you know, really, it's the infatuation and lust that wears off. It's normal, right? But the same thing happens when you start a business. That's why you'll see a lot of people jump from one thing to another. Oh, well, this course didn't work, or this network marketing company didn't work, or, you know, this, this job career path didn't work. And they give it like, 
not even six months. And it's like, okay, now I need to do something else. They're just chasing that initial high, that initial hopeful feeling. And when you're in that zone, right, it might, it might feel good to say, Oh, yeah, you know, I would I would coach someone and be on the phone with them for an hour for $200 because you're high vibe, you're in a great mood, you have lots of energy, you're like, yeah, and then I could coach, you know, five people a day. And that would be a $1,000 I would be making a day like that's amazing. And if I did that, you know, five days a week, and you start doing the math, right? Okay, well, I bring people back down to reality. Okay, let's let's go to reality. Reality is, you're not going to be coaching five people a day, five to six days a week. That's a fast track to burnout. And you're not going to you're, you're not going to be able to um, keep that up and serve people at that level. Um, nor would I want you to. So that's that's that. The second thing is what happens when you're not having a good week or, you know, God forbid something's happening with your kids or a family member, you have to go out of town, you go on vacation, right? Or you're just having a bad week. And now you see your calendar is booked with call after call after call after call, where you're having to put out a lot of energy, right? You have to hold a lot of space when you're coaching somebody. So you have you have all this energy and all this space, whether it's group coaching, whether it's a retreat, whether it's one on one, and you're in a bad way. Let me tell you, if you don't have your services and your packages priced right, you will be resentful, you will start slowly dreading the calls, you'll start procrastinating. Um, It'll show up in different ways, you'll complain more, you'll fall out of gratitude. I'm telling you this because I've been there myself in business. And I've coached thousands of people and I see it happen corporate America, and also, you know, in entrepreneurship, right? Because in corporate America, maybe you didn't go for the raise, you didn't ask for the amount of money you needed up front, you accepted a job that was less money that didn't feel good to you, because you felt you had to take something, right? So this can happen, whether you're an employee or an entrepreneur. So you have to ask yourself that question. How much money would I need to be making netting per human per activity, right? Let's say it's a group coaching thing per this whole, you know, six month group coaching, or if you have a mastermind per the mastermind, how much would you have to be making on a for you to even on your worst day, be like, Nope, I'm being paid to show up, I might not be in a great space. But I feel really good. Energetically, I am being showered with abundance for me to show up. And it's enough for you to get out of yourself and do it and not be miserable. Does that make sense? You guys take a screenshot, share this episode and tag me at Project Me with Tiffany if you're liking this and if this is making sense and it's getting your wheels turning. Okay, this this episode is designed for you guys to really, really think and reconsider your pricing. I guarantee you 99% of you have things priced too low. Now, I have experienced people who are, I call them delusional thinking, entitlement thinking, or plain old crazy thinking, where people have priced their services so exorbitantly high compared to their level of intellectual property, experience, um, proven track record and results, where it's like, I don't know how that feels good to you. Okay, and I've, I've seen it happen. Um, And that is a different form of I call it money sabotage, because you go too high with pricing something, you are going to turn people off and push them away, because you got greedy. This is coming also from a scarcity mindset, a poverty mindset. Usually people who overprice, it's because they don't feel they have enough clients coming in or they don't have a system in place like I, you know, like I teach my, you know, my private clients. They don't have a system in place to create ideal clients coming in on command, on demand and have a pipeline. So if they're only getting a client trickle in like one a month or two a month, they're wanting to charge all this money to make up for the lack of not having more clients. 
that's coming from a scarcity mindset in a different way. And you're going to turn people off energetically. Um, it's not going to feel good to people because, again, this goes back to money as an energy. That energy exchange, it doesn't make sense. I don't give a shit how much someone you hit someone's pain points. If it's off in terms of an energetic exchange for your intellectual property, um, for your you know proven track record, your amount of time in business, for example, the results that you get people... And, and it's also could be way out of alignment with the industry standard. I don't mind you being at the top of the peak in pricing in your industry. But if you're like more expensive than people who are super well known and been doing it a long time, um, no, now you're now that self sabotage. Now you're cracker barrel. You know what I mean? So that that's not going to work either. Um, there are a couple schools of thought when it comes to pricing in terms of products. And when I say products, that can be e-courses. Um, that can be a membership program like I have, like the Project Me Passive Income Posse. Um, some people um, in the fitness, I know I have a lot of fitness, health, and wellness um, professionals that listen to the show. What's up, guys? Um, and girls. But you know, when I say guys, I mean like, all sexes, genders, and even people who don't identify with a gender. It's like my catch all. Like I'm not going to go through the whole laundry list every time. Um, and let's see. Okay. So they have like exercise programs where, you know, you can, you can do a three month, you know, get in shape for summer, you know, so it's like a form of a group coaching. There's masterminds, there's retreats, there are, you know, full day events, online events, books, guides, paid printables. That's what I mean by products. Um, also, products can be things, right? Like if you have a jewelry line or you have a, you know, T-shirt line or a workout clo clothing line, those are also products. And here's what I say when you have, you know, so to speak, tangible products, meaning in exchange for someone giving you money, they are actually getting a product. They are getting an e-course. They are getting group coaching for three months. It's very clear. Um, what it's very clear what they're getting. They're getting a tangible object. You don't always obviously have to be involved, right? with these types of things. There's a lot of passive income when you do products, which you know I'm a huge, huge advocate for. But that doesn't mean you have to price them cheaply because you're not involved. And that's a mistake I see a lot of people make. It's like, well, I wrote this really cool like mini book or whatever, or even a cookbook or something like that. And, you know, I want it for passive income. So I should just charge like $7.99 for it because it's not like I, I have to be personally involved um, for in order for someone to buy it, right? It's passive income stream. And it's like, no, I don't want you pricing things like that. What is the value in the book? What is the amount of energy and expertise and time? Are these your um, recipes that you created? Um, or how much, you know, what's involved? Did you create shopping lists? Um, is it, you know, something beautiful where you can leave this cookbook sitting out? Or is it more of something that is just simply for, you know, recipes that you put in a cabinet? There's a million different ways to price something, but you don't want to just price it because, oh, it's passive income or, oh, it's a book or, oh, I've seen ads for people saying they're giving their book for free and you just pay shipping and handling. By the way, that's just a strategy, right? They're still making money off the book. They're making, they're making less, right? They might be making, let's just say, three bucks per book because they're also paying for those ads too. So three bucks per book times God knows how many people can end up being a pretty legit passive income stream. But usually people who are doing that have many, many streams like I do, probably even more than I do. And they can afford to have these streams with micro products like that. Most people who are starting out or in your first few years of business, you want to have some solid passive income streams that bring in money without you having to have, 
you know, thousands and thousands of people buying it. Because in order to have that many people buying your stuff, you either need to have a huge, totally real Instagram audience. And I'm saying Instagram for a reason. I'm not saying Facebook. Instagram audience where there's no fake followers, they're highly engaged. And I say, and when I say huge, I'm talking 100,000 or more. And or you're going to have to invest money in doing Facebook ads and not Facebook ads that you're just like winging like Facebook ads with a clear strategy or hiring someone or working with someone like me to um, create your full Facebook ad funnel for you. Otherwise, if you have a thousand followers, right? You have 2000, even you have 10,000, even you have 25,000, 30,000. If you you don't price your products and your services higher, you're going to just have to sell so much of it. And it's just not going to be realistic. So you have to think of it strategically, but you also can't get greedy with it. So what would feel good to you, right? Selling your cookbook for or your three month, you know, excuse me, get fit program for what would feel good to you. So tell me what is your bottom line, right? What is your bottom line? Like, bare bones, if I got this, this is the lowest I would accept for this item or for this course or whatever, this is the lowest I would accept and still feel good about it. Obviously, I'd want more, but I'd still feel good. What is that amount? So let's just keep with like this cookbook example. You, you know, you're the only one who knows how much time you put into it. If you hired an illustrator, if you had a professional photographer do it, if this is a coffee table pretty book, or if this is really just like kind of more for recipes and it's not something someone would leave sitting out, you know, okay, you know what energy and heart and soul went into it, what would feel good to you. So what is that bottom level number? Is it $10? $10? Is it 15? It's okay if it's 20. It's also okay if it's 50. And then I want you to put the number that you would ideally truly like to get for it. And and this is where some people get sarcastic where they're like, well, I'd like to get $100 for it. It's like, okay, that's not what I mean. That's also delusional thinking. What I'm saying is, what would you ideally like to see people paying for this where you're like, wow, this is awesome. Like people are paying a premium for my cookbook. People are paying a premium here and come up with that amount. Is it $29.95? Is it $37.95? Is it $49.95? And now you have that amount so you can play. Now, because you know your bottom level amount, which is really important, that's the least amount you would accept for this item or service um, and not feel resentful. You'd still, you know, you'd still feel energetically good about it. So you want to always price something higher than that. Here's why. There are always hidden expenses when you're selling something, whether it's your services or a tangible item. It could be shipping. It could be um, energy, meaning things always will end up taking more time than you planned for. Um, It could be technology. You didn't realize you needed to get this platform or that platform. You end up needing to hire um, a virtual assistant or a full-time assistant. Um, There are unexpected costs because maybe you didn't factor in that people return stuff um, or there's been damaged items or Facebook advertising. So you always want to price, you don't want to price at your bottom what you would accept, you need to pad it for yourself, because there will be expenses that come in. And then if you want to do discounts, for example, like early bird specials, Mother Day, Mother's Day specials, um, summer special, you know, you are an early adopter, you're an action taker. So the first 10 people or you decide to have flash sale Friday, you need to have your price be high enough to allow room for the discounts. And even with the discounts, even with the flash sale, even if you are having um, other people be affiliates of your products and services, right, where you're paying them a commission every time they sell something of yours, you want to make sure that after all of that, your bottom net price on your item or service doesn't go below 
that bare minimum that you would take and still be happy with it, right? So let's just say that bare minimum for your cookbook, I'm just saying, let's just say it's 10 bucks. That is your bare bones. But ideally, you would feel like, God, this is so awesome. I'm getting a premium for my cookbook. Let's say it's $37. So you don't, anything you price it at, minus Facebook ads, minus paying affiliates, minus your flash sale discounts, you would be screwed if you priced it at 10. Even th- pricing it at 15, you would be screwed, right? You would end up you know, not making much money on it at all. So you want to be somewhere north of the middle. So you find that middle zone, and I'm not going to do this in my head or break out a calculator right now. But you find that middle zone. So if you guys are driving or whatever, unless you can do math in your head, don't do it now. But if you're not, again, put your bottom barrel price, put your ideal price where you're like, wow, I'm getting paid a premium for my product. This feels good. Now find what the spread is between those two numbers. What's what's the middle, right? So you know what the middle is. And you want to go north of that middle number. They call it mean, M-E-A-N in math. Don't ask me how I remembered that. I think I remembered it from taking my like MBA entrance exam which I probably didn't score well on. And I'm going to have a sip of coffee. So hold on. Thank you. Okay. So now you guys know my the pricing method and where all, where all this is coming. A lot of people shoot from the hip. I'm going to price this. Oh, this feels good or that feels good. It needs to be strategic or you're going to fuck yourself. <laughs> so make sure you do this exercise. You have any follow-up questions. Make sure... You DM me at Project Me with Tiffany and put in your bottom barrel pricing, your ideal pricing, what the middle number is, and give me some information. And I'll tell you if you're, you know, if you're on track or not. And make sure you also research what things are going for in your industry. That doesn't mean you can't charge at the top of your industry, but don't get greedy and go way overboard, right? Because that is going to turn people off and push people away. Um, it just will. Unless you have something so unicorn unique about you with these amazing proven results that are far superior to anyone in the entire universe in your industry, I don't advise doing that. Again, let me know, you guys, if you found this helpful, take a screenshot share it on Instagram, share it on Facebook, tag me at Project Me with Tiffany. Sharing this episode is caring. It helps other people get this great information. Also, if you haven't done so already, it would mean the world to me if you guys could take 90 seconds, go on iTunes and leave a five-star written review on the show. It would mean so much. That's what iTunes truly cares about and how your show keeps going and growing are the reviews. Um, That's the main thing. More than anything else, you can have a shit ton of downloads, which I do, and their algorithm focuses on the review. So if you love the show, and you want it to keep going and stay strong, and if you love me, which I hope you do, and you want to support me, please do that. It would mean the world to me. So you guys, now you have everything you need in terms of pricing. Don't lament over it for days and days and days. I gave you the simple formula. I've used it for years. I've used it with hundreds of clients. It works. Go make it happen. Wishing you great health, wealth, and worth as always. And I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye. If you enjoyed this podcast, please write a five-star review on iTunes. Not only will this make me super happy, but it will allow more listeners to find our special show. Simply help me help others.